Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to a new video. You can see a bunch of X570 boards here on my table and I performed an X570 VRM test which took a lot of time. I think in total it was five days full-time testing all those different boards. In total I used 11 boards, tested them in six different test scenarios. That's why it really takes a lot of time and it doesn't only take time but also money. Obviously I had to buy a bunch of boards. A few of them I had already, like the Crosshair 8 Hero, I had the X570 Aros Pro and I think an MSI board I had from the MSI project. But I think I bought six or seven boards, so invested, I don't know, like a thousand, 1,500 euros, something in this direction. So thank you very much to my Patreon supporters for making this video possible. Before we get to the test data, we have to discuss some parts about VRM testing, especially power consumption, temperature reading and all of those very important things when it comes to testing and make sure that your test data is kind of consistent. I decided to have three different test scenarios and I'm calling them 125 watt, 165 watt and 225 watt state. 125 watt basically um, is the power consumption that a 3900X or a 3950X can have under full load. Now some people might say but the TDP is 105 watt. How can the CPU consume more than that? If you're asking yourself this question I strongly recommend that you're checking out Gamers Nexus latest video about TDP and then you will see how TDP is basically just a marketing figure and it's very likely that your CPU in the end under full load consumes 120, maybe 130 watt. Really depends on your individual sample. But let's get back to the test scenario. The first test scenario I called 125 watt. In this condition, a 3900X was clocked to 3.8 gigahertz at 1.15 V core. And now it's really important to make sure that the V core is exactly the same on every single motherboard. Because you cannot just go into BIOS and then set 1.15 volt and maybe adjust the load line calibration because you have different voltage drops and also software is not really accurate. For example, on the Astrock Extreme 4 motherboard, I'm setting 1.25 in BIOS with load line calibration and everything fixed. CPU-Z is also reading 1.25 volt, but measured it's 1.29. Measured on the back of the mainboard at the MLCCs. Those are the small caps behind the CPU where the voltage measurement is very accurate and should be exactly the same what the CPU is basically receiving. And keeping that in mind, I decided to measure the MLCC voltage of each mainboard on the back to make sure that every CPU is receiving exactly the same voltage and also the same clock to make sure it's the same test scenario. And then I'm capturing or measuring the CPU power consumption over the 8-pin EPS connector with this current clamp. Then you have to keep in mind that each single mainboard is different, each single VRM configuration is different and even if you have two mainboards that are using the same power stages, it's very likely that the switching losses are different. Because the switching losses, that's the loss of the power across your VRM. So for example, your PSU is delivering 120 watt to your CPU, then you have maybe 10, 15 watt loss, switching losses on your VRMs. And those switching losses really depend on your, on your configuration, on the individual power stages and everything like switching frequency. That's why we cannot just hook up the current clamp to the 8-pin EPS connector and then just go by always setting it to 125 watts. Because the CPU configuration in each of those states will be different. For example, one motherboard will deliver 100 watt, the other motherboard will deliver 110 watt. That's why we have to make sure that the CPU configuration is extremely accurate. 1.15 volt measured at the MLCCs at the back of the mainboard. Another thing is temperature measurement. You cannot trust software because you never know where the sensor is located. On some boards, the measurement is not even, even enabled or you, you cannot see it. It's always enabled but you cannot track the temperature in some cases. Some, sometimes the mainboard manufacturer is hiding the temperature so you cannot read it out with hardware info. And especially in that case you just have to measure the temperature yourself. I decided to use two temperature probes mainly because on X570 in most of the cases the VRM is split up in two parts. You have a part that's sitting above the CPU and one part that's sitting next to, to the CPU. And in each case of the mainboard both parts have different designed heat sinks. Some of them are not connected via heat pipe. So it's important to check which area is getting the warmest. And comparing different mainboards 
you never know where the temperature sensor is located for software reading. Is it sitting between those parts? Is it sitting in the middle there or in the middle there? You don't know. That's why you cannot compare uh, mainboards by looking at the software reading. For the temperature, I recorded both positions and we are always talking about the hottest location. So it could be on top or it could be the location on the side. One last thing we have to talk about before we get to the results is the VRM temperature range. You now see this chart in front of you where you see the green area is up to 80 degrees Celsius and up to 80 degrees Celsius really is completely fine. It doesn't really matter if your VRM is hitting 50 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Celsius. Obviously 50 is better, is lower, but 70 degrees Celsius technically is still absolutely fine. The yellow area where I'm showing you up to 105 degrees Celsius, so from 80 to 105 degrees Celsius technically is still okay. Most power stages can sustain much more than 105, like 130 sometimes, I've even seen some that can do 140 degrees Celsius according to spec. But still, I mean, from my personal opinion, if I'm buying an X570 board, it's like a premium high-end board. Um, some of them cost like 200, 250 dollar, even more. I don't want to see those kind of temperatures if I'm spending this amount of money. But that's my personal opinion. You can decide if you want to consider the yellow area more like green or more like red. Because the red area is from 105 degrees Celsius. And from my personal point of view, those temperatures are not acceptable on a platform like X570. As I said before, some power stages, according to spec, they can do 120, 130 degrees Celsius. Technically, that's fine. But obviously, higher temperature leads to faster degradation. And again, X570, expensive boards, something I don't want to see. A quick overview of the boards in today's test. Starting off with MSI X570A Pro, the third cheapest board in today's test with 170 euro. Followed by MSI MPG X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi 200 euro. MSI MEG X570 Ace 380 euro, that's a more expensive one. Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus 210 euro. Asus ROG Strix X570 F Gaming 270 Euro, Asus ROG Crosshair 8 Hero with 390 Euro, the second most expensive board in today's test. Two boards from Astrock starting with X570 Phantom Gaming 4 160 Euro, that's the second cheapest board in the test. And the Astrock X570 Extreme Ford with 210 euro. Gigabyte brings the cheapest board in today's test, that's the X570 UD, so ultra durable, 155 euro. Gigabyte X570 Aros Pro, 240 euro, and Gigabyte X570 Aros Extreme, the most extreme and expensive board in today's test, 740 euro. Let's finally talk about the first test, the 125 watt test scenario, 3900X set to 3.8 gigahertz, 1.15 volt, measured on the MLCCs. On top you see the Aorus Extreme is consuming only 116 watt, while for example the Gaming Edge Wi-Fi on bottom is consuming 130 watt across the 8 pin EPS connector and that's exactly what I was talking about before with the efficiency or the general VRM power stage configuration, a more efficient, more high-end VRM will consume less, will be more efficient, therefore it will consume less and you can already see in this overview where you can expect boards to be quite warm because they have to dissipate additional heat because the VRM is less efficient, therefore they would technically need a better heatsink, but they're cheap and usually they don't have the better heatsink and that's, yeah. We will get to the results and you'll see what, exactly what I mean. First result, open test bench. That means the mainboard is sitting on the table right here. There is no direct airflow to the mainboard. The CPU is cooled by the Corsair H115i. Again, 3900X set to 3.8 gigahertz, 1.15 volt on the MLCCs. Everything, by the way, is loaded with one hour Prime 95 26.6, that's non-ABX. 
On top the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Extreme and the ROG Corsair 8 Hero both are basically almost the same about 50 degrees Celsius very very good um, temperatures right here. Also the Tough Gaming X570 Plus extremely good only 61 degrees Celsius considering how much cheaper it is than the Aorus Extreme that was kind of surprising. Let's take a look at the bottom Gigabyte X570 Ultra Durable 87 degrees Celsius Gaming Edge Wi-Fi from MSI 89 degrees Celsius and the X570A Pro 96 degrees Celsius. And some might argue that Open Test Bench is not really a realistic test scenario and usually I agree. That's why I decided to do every test again in the Lian Li O11 Dynamic. Mounting the H115i in the top location of the case, therefore the fans will help to blow some air across the VRMs, therefore it should help with VRM cooling and I think it's also a very realistic test scenario. O11 Dynamic very popular and it's very popular also to have an AIO in top of the case that would help with um, the temperatures. Also there was no GPU load and additional GPU load would make the test worse. Most GPUs are dissipating the heat inside the case therefore would be worse for the temperatures but we're not loading the GPU in this case uh, to give it um, a better test scenario. Gigabyte X570 hours extreme again on top 42 degrees Celsius, Crosshair 8 Hero 44 degrees Celsius, Strix X570 F Gaming 46 degrees Celsius, Tough Gaming X570 Plus 49 degrees Celsius, Aros Pro 52 degrees Celsius, Mac X570 Ace 54 degrees Celsius, all of those are extremely good. So those temperatures 40 to 50 degree, perfect, nothing to complain about whatsoever. Looking at the Gaming Edge Wi-Fi and the X570A Pro, 80 up to 90 degrees Celsius in this test scenario where we have basically no OC. I mean, it's 3.8 gigahertz, 1.15 volt. That's nothing. That's something that has to run all day. And uh, under this test scenario, having like 80 to almost 90 degrees Celsius on those MSI boards, that is not really impressive. Second test 165 watt class with 3900X clock to 4.2 gigahertz at 1.25 volt measured on the MLCCs. I think that's a moderate OC and a quite realistic test scenario. You can see again the VRM efficiency by just measuring the power draw across the 8 pin EPS connector. The good boards or the better boards are at about 150 to 155 watt power consumption and the cheaper ones consume almost 15 watt more, so 165 to up to 168 uh, watt power consumption across the APN EPS connector, so 15 to 20 watt more they have to dissipate across the heatsink. Let's get to the test result itself. First the open test bench, you can see the expensive boards again about 60 degree Celsius, that's the Aros Extreme Corsair 8 Hero Strix X570 F Gaming. Followed by the Mac X570 Ace Tough Gaming X570 Aros Pro in the region of about 75 degrees Celsius. That's still fine even for open test bench. And the cheaper boards, Gigabyte X570 Ultra Durable, Gaming Edge Wi-Fi X570 A Pro, all, of, all three of them are in a not acceptable area. Especially the MSI X570 A Pro is getting so warm that it starts to throttle. So it would have an even higher temperature than 125 degrees Celsius, but it starts to throttle. That's why this board is absolutely not usable in this case. Again, mounting everything in the O11 dynamic with the H115i AIO pointed across, pointed towards the VRM. The additional airflow helps to drop the temperatures across the VRMs on the more expensive boards of about 10 degrees Celsius. So we're more in the region of about 50 degrees Celsius for Aorus Extreme, Corsair 8 Hero, X570F Gaming and Gaming X570+. Plus. Even the X570 Aorus Pro and the Mac X570As are in the region of 60 degrees Celsius, which is still extremely good. The cheaper boards X570 Ultra Durable and Gaming Edge Wi-Fi A Pro are pretty bad. Even with direct airflow, I would not use those three boards for 3900X with moderate OC. Last test, 225 watt, and this is simulating a 3950X, so 16 core. CPU with moderate overclocking. I can tell because I already had uh, the 16 core in June and also Ju in July, so I had it for over four weeks. 
To test the 16 core, it was an early sample, but it's not going to change. I mean, boost clock obviously changes, but not the power consumption. There's not going to be a big difference, and that's why this is pretty much simulating 3950X at moderate overclocking. The setting is the 3900X though, at 4.2 GHz with 1.4 volts. So that's a higher setting for the 3900X. Power consumption of the better boards is about 215 to 220 watt, while the cheaper boards are consuming almost 20 watt more, 236 to 238 for the cheap ones. Again, open test bench first, Aros Extreme Corsair 8 Hero, extremely strong, 64 and 68 degrees Celsius, followed by Strix, Mac Ace and Tough Gaming, all three of them about uh, 85 degrees Celsius, still usable considering there is no airflow, all three of them are fine. But then starting especially with the Phantom Gaming 4, ASRock Extreme 4, XR70A Pro Gaming Edge Wi-Fi Ultra Durable, you see the ones that are marked could not keep up their frequency. All four of them were not usable for this test scenario. The Extreme 4 was better and at even 125 watt it was not throttling but still this is a temperature I'm not feeling comfortable with. Last test, 225 watt mounted in O11 Dynamic, Aorus Extreme Corsair 8 Hero Strix all three of them about 60 degrees Celsius, Aros Extreme actually more in the region of 50 degrees Celsius, very strong, followed by the Tough Gaming, Mac Ace and Aros Pro, about 70 to 75 degrees Celsius, and then the cheaper boards on the bottom, Extreme 4, Phantom Gaming 4, Ultra Durable, x 70 a Pro, Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, all of them are in the region that's not cool literally anymore and especially X570A Pro and Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, those two were even throttling with direct airflow. Let's finally get to the conclusion. Gigabyte X570 Ultra Durable MSI X570A Pro Gaming Edge Wi-Fi from MSI and also the Astrock Phantom Gaming 4, those four boards are not great they're far from great. Especially keeping in mind what those boards cost. I mean, they're the low-end boards of X570, but still you're investing 155 to almost 200 euro. And I think in this price range, those temperatures are not really acceptable. Even though you always have to keep in mind what are you going to buy this board for. If you're using it with a 3600, 3600X, maybe you don't even overclock and then it really doesn't matter. Then you can get the XL70 A Pro. That's fine. You can get the Ultra Durable. They will be a little bit warmer, but they're not going to be in a region where you will have bad temperatures. But if you're getting a 3900X, 3950X, I would stay away from those boards. Then you should maybe consider getting the Asus Tough Gaming XL70 Plus. That's my personal favorite in this test. It's from my perspective, really surprising how well this board performs in this test. In every test scenario, it's almost as good as the really, really good boards and it's much cheaper. It costs currently 210 euro, but in every test condition, it had really, really good temperatures. Then going above, we have the Strix board from Asus. We have the Crosshair 8 Hero, which was the second best board in this test. And on top, we have the Aorus Extreme. The Aorus Extreme from Gigabyte, such a nice board. I mean, it, it looks beautiful. It has a passive heatsink for the chipset and it has the best VRN temperatures in every test scenario. So you cannot argue with the Aorus Extreme. The only thing I dislike is the price with, I think it was like 750 euros. So almost double the Crosshair 8 Hero while the Crosshair 8 Hero is only two or three degrees Celsius worse. So maybe, yeah, price performance wise, it's much better to get the Crosshair 8 Hero. But if you want to have the best of the best, you can get the hours extreme. So much about the X570 uh, VRM testing. I think this video was again much longer than I expected, uh, but that's fine. You had to suffer longer because I also had to suffer longer to work for this. And I think it's good to have this test data. If you're missing any important board, just let me know in the comments. Maybe I can do a follow-up video um, because adding two or three more boards is not gonna do much more work than what I already did for this test so far. Just let me know what you think and thanks for joining in. See you soon.